So the first trailer for Pixar's Soul has dropped. Let's do this. What would you want to be known for on Earth? We only have a short time on this planet. You want to become the person that you were born to be? Don't waste your time on all the junk of life. What am I doing? Spend your precious hours doing what will bring out the real you. The brilliant, passionate you that's ready to contribute something meaningful into this world. I got the gig. I really need a haircut today, man. Can you fit me in? Whoa, whoa, sorry. Probably for doing this funny cowboy dance. <laughs> Great. Alrighty. Real quick before I give my full take on it, be sure to tell me what you thought down below in the comment section. Also, after this video, if you want to know what I think about all of the Pixar films, you can check it out at this video right up here. I'm going to watch it one more time, and then I'm going to start talking. So this is just a teaser trailer for the movie. We are like eight, nine months out from its release. So it's just going to give us a taste for the flavor of what the movie is, the types of things that you can expect, and that's very much what this trailer is, that it kind of sets up the tone, the sorts of ideas that you're going to get inside of it, and only in kind of the last, I don't know, what, 30 seconds of it, do you get an idea of where the plot is going a little bit, and what the sense of humor of it will be. I I've been pretty kind of critical at times of Pixar over the last few years, because they've done so many sequels, and you did Cars 3, Incredibles 2, Toy Story 4, and I, you know, I was one of those people who was very loudly declaring how bad of an idea it was to do a Toy Story 4. Luckily, the movie turned out quite good. Likewise with Incredibles 2, that one also turned out very good. But what makes Pixar special, and not just another studio that puts out good movies, but what has always kind of been that distinct thing about them is that they've been cutting edge. They've been ahead of the curve. They've taken these crazy risks. They've taken these premises that on paper, they shouldn't work for a kid's movie. And so you say, we're going to make a movie about a robot that's recycling and it's almost has no dialogue for 45 minutes. That really shouldn't work. We're going to make a story about a rat who pulls a guy's hair and controls his body while he's cooking. That doesn't make a lot of sense as a kid's movie. Um, we're going to make a movie about an old man who's cranky. And an old man that th is the protagonist of a story for a movie that we want children to watch. And then he attaches balloons to his house and flies up out of the... You know, th these are bizarre ideas. And you know, t making Coco and things like this. Inside Out, a story that's intended to explain puberty and our emotions and our psychology in a way that children can understand it while trying to be a fun adventure. Those are dangerous ideas and they're unconventional. There's a bunch of reasons that they should fail. And every single one of those I mentioned, I would say worked very well. Um, and they're very successful at the film that they were trying to make. Maybe you didn't like one of them or something like that. That's totally fine. But that's what makes Pixar so interesting to me, that they take not just risks, but bold risks. And they propose things that when I read the synopsis, I think, I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know how that's going to work. When I first heard about Inside Out, I, I just thought, that just doesn't work as a kid's movie. They're at the age range for the bulk of who they want to go see that movie, they're concrete thinkers, and this is about abstract concepts. And then the movie, that's exactly what it did. It took these abstract concepts and it made them concrete so that children could understand them. That's brilliant. And I'm thinking that's what this looks like. I mean, they kind of heavily put it from the credits of Inside Out. You look at the last little bit of it and it definitely has more of a flavor of Inside Out in taking these big, abstract, bold concepts that adults think about and packaging it in a way that can 
entertain children and give it an insight into life to them as they're kind of figuring things out as they go along. Uh, I mean, I watched it and I thought, as I did with Inside, I was like, I, I mean, this is, you know, obviously very soulful in the beginning of it and talking about what are you going to do with your life and how do you have meaning? Questions that like my seven-year-old isn't necessarily contemplating right now. And in which case, once again, it falls into this category of where I read the synopsis and I go, I don't know how they're going to make this work, but they're Pixar. So I love that they're taking these risks. And maybe this will be the bomb. Maybe this will be the one where they try something and it really just doesn't work. But I love this version of Pixar. As much as I raved about Toy Story 4. And I i mean, it's one of like, it's probably going to be my top five for the year. Pixar doing weird stuff is a lot more interesting to me than another Toy Story movie. Another sequel that they, they know the machine on how to do it well. Um, they're an excellent studio, and I love it when excellent studios do something crazy and pull it off. That's that's the, you know, that's the stuff that's cool when it happens. And so, I, you know, I watched the trailer. I'm not quite sure how it'll work. If it was a trailer from a different studio, I would probably interpret it very differently. But because part of it is that it is from Pixar, I'm very curious about how this is going to turn out. And that I love that Pixar is doing something wildly different. And um, we shall see what happens. Tell me what you thought down below in the comment section. If you want my full take on the Pixar filmography, check that out right over there in my rankings. Thank you so much for watching. And keep talking movies too much.